Welcome to Hard Questions, where we gather pastors together to take on your tough questions and answer them right from the Bible. I'm Tom Hollis, the moderator, and today our panelists include... Dr. William R. Glaze, Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh. Pastor Buck Schaefer, Grace Life Church, Monroeville in the North Hills. Pete Jackloney, South Hills Assembly of God Church, Bethel Park, PA. J. Anthony Gilbert, pastor of Another Level Ministries in Mount Washington. Pastors, thank you for being with us today. Topics, sex, marriage, and Solomon's wow. many wives. We're going to get right after it here. Sometimes the biggest decision uh, we have before we go on, on the air here is who's going to take the question? Who's going to take this question? Who's going to take that question? Bill, it's fallen to you to take this first question. What does it mean to be one flesh in marriage? Well, you know, it's interesting that uh, three times in the word, Genesis mm -hmm. and in Matthew and in Ephesians, it says, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife and the two shall be one flesh. Now somebody said, if Jesus said, verily, you need to listen to that. If he said, verily, verily, verily. you need to look. But he said this three times in the, in, in the Bible. So, you know, we need to heed. So what, you know, what does that mean? You know, it says, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother. So first of all, there's, there's the turning away from relationships that were the most significant and most important to you. And then it says to cleave, and that word cleave yeah. actually means like super glue together. Yeah. And then it says to weave, that you become intertwined. And I believe that in the intertwining, the one flesh, it, it, it means several things. You know, become one sexually, mm -hmm. become one emotionally, yeah. you know, become one financially, uh, socially. So I think that, you know, to, the one flesh means that your lives are intertwined with, with each other. And that's why divorce is so devastating because if you've been glued together mm -hmm. and become one flesh, that when you tear them apart, mm -hmm. you know, there's a song that says, every time I go, I take a piece of, of me with you, you know? Yeah. And I think that that's, that's what's happening, that one flesh, the, the, the weaving of the, the sexually, the emotionally, the socially, and then you tear it apart you know, a part will go with the other person, you know, when, when they do that. So the, that, I believe that's what that one flesh means. Yeah, you know, that's a, a great explanation. And I, I just want to ask uh, maybe Pastor Jay, that whole thing of when uh, people are knit together like that sexually, that also argues for why premarital sex is a problem because there's those same kind of raggedy edges when people pull apart when there's no, they're not together. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, there's a connection here. I mean, as uh, all being married here, um, you know, they you know they talk about uh, you, uh, what is it? Break up to make up. You know, uh, Marvin Gaye sang a song yeah. called "Sexual Healing." Mm -hmm. There's something that happens when you come together, even in a marital union. When you come to, matter of fact, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but I would talk and I do premarital counseling. I've, I've married people that were uh, sleeping together, but chose to stop mm -hmm. and then yep. waited. And then I asked them, how was it? Now, I don't want no details, but like, yeah. what did they feel inside when they came together? Every single time they said there was a purity about it that I'd never experienced before. So there's something supernatural that happens. Even if you're not saved, there's still that's right. something that's, right. that's right. supernatural that happens when you come together with that person. Soul ties, all those things happen mm -hmm. because God said it's one flesh. And that's why I think he mentioned it so many times saying, hey, y'all might think it's just fun and games to get together and do your thing and get your swerve on as they used to say back <laughs> in the day, but that's not what it's about. It's yeah. about coming together and becoming that one flesh. And that happens every time you're physically intimate. Yeah. Well. No, I, I agree with Bill and, and everything that's said. You know, Malachi says, I, in the Message Bible, I love it, I hate the dismembering of the one flesh union. Mm, wow. That's like, it tears you yeah. apart, it tears yeah. your kids apart. And that's where a lot of fences open up and a lot of hurts and pains where the devil destroys families, comes to kill, steal and destroy. But I love it that when you're one flesh, God sees you as one, your husband and wife, you are one. And it really the goal is to be baptized and be one with him, mm. one with Christ. So. Mm. One flesh, very important. And it's, it's, that union is, is really a symbol of our relationship with Christ. And Pete, I want to I wanna get into the second question because okay. this just flows right into this. It does. And the, the second question is this. What does the Bible say about sex before marriage? And okay. specific F scriptures Specific, well. oh, they did ask yeah. Ephesians 5, 3 through 5. It says, but fornication and all cleanliness and covetousness, let it not even be named among you as fitting for the saints. Now, again, we have to distinguish between the non-believer and the believer, but for the, those who are born again and, and, and as a pastor, I'm seeing a lot of this 
uh, uh, these last two decades were yep. uh, that we have allowed uh, the lifestyle of the non-believer to enter into the believer's life where believers before marriage are living together. It says, nor foolish talking, nor, nor chorus jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that, here we go, no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who's an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. So in other words, are we really giving full credence to the word of God? Also in 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 19, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality right. sins against his no. own body. Or don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? First Thessalonians, now stop here. It says there's, this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. So we're told from the very get-go, yes, the passion, we're going to get later on to talk about Solomon, the, the passion is there. Uh, you know, when I fell in love with Elaine, I, I, we made a vow together that our honeymoon night would be our honeymoon night. And our honeymoon night was our honeymoon night. People, I've had people say, oh, come on. Do you, you expect us to believe that? I said, I don't care if you believe it or not. I can stand before That's God right. and know that nothing happened. And, and I'm grateful. Now, does that mean that nothing happened in my life before Elaine? No, I'm, unfortunately. And, and I regret that. I know that's under the blood. And I did not want that sin to be part of our relationship. And I know Doc has some quotes about those who do live in sin, so. No, I just, I, I, to me the most, and, and I appreciate those verses that Pete brought out, but to me the most powerful verse, and when we look at fornication, that's sex outside of marriage, and they're asking specifically, mm -hmm. is Hebrews 13, 4. Mm -hmm. Marriage is honorable oh, in amen. all, and the bed is undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. So, you know, God is saying that marriage is the way to go. Marriage is my plan. Yes. Marriage is the, uh, is, 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 you know, you can enjoy yourself. You can knock yourself out sexually within the marriage boundaries, right? But if you step outside of that, you're a fornicator or adulterer and God will judge you. Pastor Glaze is telling us to knock ourselves out sexually here uh, in, in marriage, of course. In, in marriage. marriage. I said in marriage. Right? Yeah. Well, let me say real quickly, um, one of, a lot of times, uh, you guys have done well covering that. The reason why, too, I believe fornication is bad, especially if you're dating, it robs you of developing the foundation in the relationship. If the sex is good, you don't need to get to know the person. And you can be so caught up in the intimacy of the physical part of it that you forget to talk about right. what's really important, that soul connect that needs to happen. Are we compatible? Do we see things eye to eye? So if the sex is good, and let's just be real, then what happens in a relationship when you're dating somebody, you're like, oh, I don't really matter. Oh, I'm just so in love. They're just so beautiful. They're just so wonderful. And then you decide to get married. You put the cart in front of the horse. You are not even compatible. And then when that That's sex right. gets old, you don't have the ability to have a sustaining, lasting relationship. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I just love the scripture you read, but listen to the way it says it in the Amplified. It says, let marriage bed be held in honor, esteem worthy, precious, and a great price, especially dear in all things. Let marriage bed be undefiled, kept undishonored, for God will judge and punish the unchaste, all guilty sexual vice and adulterers. You know, I can, That's pretty clear. Yeah, yeah. I, I can just picture people watching saying, oh, those Bible thumpers. No, it's not the idea of being a Bible thumper. It's the idea of being a watch guard saying, be careful. This, this will take you down the wrong road. This will take you down to a path of destruction, even to the, those who That's are right. believers. Right. You mentioned counseling. I know someone who counseled couples and he said, you know, people, what do they say in the world? Well, you have to experience this, you know, the side, make Try sure it, it works. He said, every time it caused hardness. Yes. Whereas yes. The, yes. The, those that did not, mm -hmm. it, it, there was an openness, there was a softness, whereas the, the experience, so to speak, caused a hardness and difficulty in that relationship. And real quick, if the car's really, really valuable, like a Bentley, you, you don't go. test drive Bentleys. No. Yeah. You buy them. You can't even touch them when you go on the lot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch the Bentley, Come everybody. On, if you're All a used right. car, it's another story. <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> Take it out of the bed. <laughs> Coming Take it off up road. in 60 seconds, we ask, why was Solomon considered a godly man when he had so many wives? We'll be right back.
Well, thank you for coming back to Hard Questions. We've been talking about sex, marriage, all those things. Pastor Jay, I want to get your, uh, your, your thoughts and your biblical perspective on what does the Bible say about divorce and remarriage and how is that different from okay. what the world says? There's a lot to that, so I'm going to be kind of quick and share the wealth here. Um, well, you know, the Bible, I believe there's three major reasons why um, you can get a divorce biblically, adultery, abuse, and abandonment. And the scriptures that I stand by, there's one with Jesus talked about how except for um, adult, or adultery or fornication, that person is not allowed to get a divorce. Um, and then also in 1 Corinthians 7, it talks about the, um, if the unbeliever chooses to depart uh, and they choose to abandon you, then that's another reason. Then I think the abuse part for me is this, not the fact that if anybody ever made a mistake, can they be, but if someone's constantly abusing somebody, then you, I believe, this is my personal take on it, you apply the Matthew 18 principle to it. Yes. Uh, because then you gotta wonder if they're even a believer. And then if you choose to back away, most of the time they're gonna be choosing to leave and go their way as well. And most of the time that's when you're gonna see a divorce happen with that as well. Now it's not, any one of those three though, let me say this, you don't have to leave. You never have to leave, but I believe the Bible gives us an opportunity to leave. And if we leave under those bad grounds, the Bible forbids that we're not allowed to remarry. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's I think if, you, if you're a believer and you walk in 1 Corinthians, agape 13, uh, God kind of love, the love of God never went to a divorce court. But on the other side of that, you have people that want to get a divorce for whatever reason. Yes. I agree yeah. with Jay, yeah. abandonment, abuse. We've dealt with tons of couples, you know, sexual immorality. And it's just like, they keep doing it, keep doing it. Well, the Bible sets us up because Moses said, someone's heart's getting hard and the law of Moses made a way for this. But the reality is, you know, you go to some denominations, if you get a divorce, it's like the unpardonable sin. Yeah, right. right. And you are done with ministry, done with life. And I disagree with that. I feel like you put that which is behind you, you get up on your feet, God loves you, do the will of God. But it's not something we do every other year. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, and, and actually that was a problem in the Roman world. Right. They were like right. getting divorced and remarried right. like every year. But, and, and, but let me ask uh, this side of the table, what about the remarriage side of that? What, what are, uh, Pastor Glaze, you first, what do you, what do you think on that side of it biblically? Yeah, well, I, I think that if you don't have a biblical reason for right. divorce, then you don't have a biblical reason for remarriage. Uh, and that, you know, that's hard. That's right. uh, you know, yeah. and I, I get a lot of people, and I'm sure these other pastors right. do too, that call me and they're, they're, they're struggling in their marriage. And the first thing that they ask me, you know, if I get a divorce, can I get remarried? And I'm like, well, no, you need to deal with, you need to deal with your marriage right now. Yeah. And if you walk away from it and you don't have a biblical reason, then you don't have a biblical reason for a remarriage. Uh, but, 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 but I'm seeing that people are getting remarried anyway. So, you know, does God, and then some people will tell them, okay, well, you're in adultery now that you got remarried without a biblical reason. Well, you know, again, I have to go back to the blood of Christ that even if you got remarried and you didn't have a biblical reason that the blood of Christ cleanses us from, from our sin. So, you know, I would struggle to say that you're, you're in a continual state of adultery. Okay. Which is what yeah. some people would tell them. Wow. And, and remember, it was, what they're leaning on here was, it was because of the hardness of your heart. These, you know, if, if dinner wasn't made properly, they handed the wife uh, uh, a bill of divorcement. And, and in the Old Testament, it was, it was ridiculous of what they were divorcing over. And, and you know what, it's coming to that this way today. And I really believe if, if couples in their premarital, I'm, I'm speaking to the believer now, right. the non-believer, I, I can't help them in w what I'm gonna say. But for the believer, if, they're, if their marriage is built on the word before marriage, if their life is built on the word before marriage, you've got two solid believers coming together, then you've got a solid foundation. Yep. And it comes back to this word. It comes back to the word of God once again. And we you th you're thumping that Bible? I'm Sound thumping like you're thumping that I'm Bible. Can I give a scripture to that yeah, real quick? Please. I know we need, I know it'll lead right into the next question. Uh, a lot of people glance over this in Matthew chapter one and verse six. I think it's very profound. It says, and Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon, the wife of Uriah. Yeah. I think it's outstanding that Uriah was dead. 
he married Bathsheba, but the yeah. Bible, did, the, the heaven did not recognize that marriage. Yeah. So even though Whoa. earth might have the papers, heaven may say null and void. So oh, I think that that's is, something else that's important as well. That is, that wow, is something. That's, that's powerful. I, th I think it's one of the things, this is what we face, right? You alluded to it, is that we know people that are divorced and remarried, godly people, loving uh -huh. the Lord in ministry, many of them, and, and, the, and it almost seems like, well, wait a minute, is that is that the biblical model for that? It's hard for us to figure out how to, how to go forward with that, but we do because they're good people and they're, they're serving the Lord. Right. There's powerful yeah. pastors that in the beginning, I, I don't want to name their names, but powerful, powerful men that, you know, are literally reaching the entire world that, that their first marriage didn't yeah. win yeah, a ride. Exactly. And, and they were the innocent party. I, I think that God always wants to err, if there's such thing as error, but God wants to right. move on the side of compassion Amen. and forgiveness grace. Yeah. Amen. and grace. Amen. So we have the next one. We're going to talk about somebody who started off good and did not end so well. Why was Solomon considered the wisest man, godly man, when he had so many wives, 700 wives, 300 concubines? Tell me about this <laughs> what festival. What a contradictory statement. Yeah. Uh, you know, Solomon started off good. He started off doing what his father wanted, but something that hit me is what, what Jay said. Maybe there's a little bit of that soul tie coming from a generational wow. curse from wow. before, wow. but this dude was wise. This dude mm -hmm. was smart. This dude had wisdom. Mm -hmm. He asked God for wisdom. Uh, so I'm having a struggle with one wife. So seven wives would be an issue, but 700 and then 300 concubines, I don't know what a man would do, oh, man. but that's not wisdom at all, is it? No, no, so no. if you realize this guy writes Proverbs, this guy writes Song of Solomon about love and marriage and, and a spouse and how to treat her. And then, but I, I think what happened if you study the scriptures, in the end, I think those wives uh, turned his heart That's away from sense. God. And, and if you notice, he was starting to do sacrifices right. to other gods yes. and yes. the gods of his wives that had idols. I think he was probably just like, okay, go, go sacrifice to Molech. Yes. And, and the Asherah. Bible says he opened himself up to all this stuff. And uh, I really believe that uh, if you get the end of Ecclesiastes, he starts to try to correct that. And he yeah. says, it's all vanity and chasing of the wind. A man can have this, and I did. A man can have that, and I did. But this is all vanity, vanity. It's meaningless. So I think he went out of the confines of what God wanted, and God will let you do that. If you choose that, God will let you do that. But it did cost Even him, and there the was wisest man great that consequences. Ever lived. And, and he walked away. Pastor Bill. Well, you know, I heard somebody saying, you know, I don't know how true it is, but I think there's some validity to it is that Solomon wrote the Song of Solomon when, in, as, his, as a youth. He wrote Proverbs in his middle age, and then he wrote Ecclesiastes, you know, in his, uh, in his elderly years. And, and so it seems like even though he let these women turn his heart away from God, that somewhere along the line, again, as Buck said, he realized that, you know, what he did was wrong. So, you know, we can't use Solomon as a justification. No. Uh, you know, as, 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 you know, I heard somebody say he has 700 wives and 300 porcupines. But, uh, you know, he, you know. I was the, the, just thinking if he had dinner with the one, uh, uh, it'd take him three and a half years to get go, back around. Don't go there. The other, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, but, get but, that out of your mind. Yeah, but, you know, when you think about it, you know, he, 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 he learned. He, I believe he learned his lesson as to what, where he went wrong. And I think if you read Ecclesiastes, if he had the chance to do it again, maybe he might make a different decision. And, and you know, it goes back to, again, goes back to the, the power of sexual sin. He who commits that sin sins against his body. You become, a, whatever you yield yourself servant to, that's whom you will be slave to. Uh, and, and that's the reason why if there's ever a day that we, we as born again believers need to safeguard our, our mind, of course, through the eye gate, hearing gate, um, we need to, there's an on, onslaught war like never sure. before. And if a wise man like Solomon could, could be, yes, we need to realize that. And real quick, I think it also shows us too that wisdom was given to him as a gift. And even though he was gifted with wisdom, his character still could have been faulty. Right. So you can operate in a strong gifting and have a charisma, but still have lacking character. And I think God wants us to realize no matter how gifted you are, there's still the part of you that's the humanity that we have to deal with as well. 
That's right. That's right. That's right. So no 700 wives, everybody. Uh, that's not <laughs> going to work out well. No porcupines either. Well, coming up, we get uh, taken to task on how we answered a previous question. Stay tuned. Uh -oh. Well, while we enjoy receiving your, your questions on Hard Questions Hotline, we also appreciate comments, and we received this comment. Let's take a listen. Hello. Uh, this evening, while listening to Hard Questions, um, I, I don't think I heard wrong, but one of the questions was uh, where they could find that uh, um, it's wrong to have sex before marriage in the Bible. And... Uh, the answer that was given um, was really surprising that there really wasn't such a place. Now, I use the NIV version, have been using it for decades, and I know it's very clearly answered in Ephesians 5, chapter 5, verse 3, or 1 Thessalonians, uh, chapter 4, verses 3 to 5. Uh, couldn't be clearer there. Uh, Galatians 5. 19 and 24 are the verses there, and 1 Corinthians 5, uh, the first verse. Um, I, I hope I didn't misunderstand the question because it really did seem like that was the answer that they were looking for. Thank you. Bye. Well, first of all, I congratulate you on looking up the verses of being uh, biblical in your, in your comment, and I, I, I really wrestled with this because I don't think we would ever say that there's nowhere in the Bible that says sex outside of marriage is wrong. There certainly is. And Pastor Jay, you had a, a comment about this. Yeah, I was thinking that uh, there are times we've discussed that and we've mentioned about um, how the battle between, like someone says, is living together wrong. You know, the quote unquote, what they call shacking up, you know, living together, a man and a woman. Well, that in itself is not necessarily a sin. Now, you could go to the case of um, avoid the appearance of evil. We get yeah. that. But it's not sexual sin to live in the same house. Sexual sin. Is, and I'm wondering if that's where this individual took that that stance. Maybe it pulling from there. But I'm, I'm with you. I don't uh, think anyone's although, ever. Almost 100 percent of people that are living together are true sexual Without activity going on as well. Yeah. Yeah. With, and I and I totally and I and I wouldn't condone that. I just wonder when we are addressing that if that's where they took that and went with it. But I know even with what you said, I, I, w I don't think anybody's ever taken a stance that that's not yeah. biblical. Well, yeah. and, and, and I know that uh, as pastors, all of us have run into it because I remember a specific situation where I was counseling a couple in premarital counseling, and they were living together, and they actually had like three kids, and they were like twelve years old. So they, and, but I, I did you know, recommend to them that they, you know, separate and sleep in separate bedrooms. Uh, and they came back to the next session and the lady was upset with me. She said, I can't believe he moved out of the bedroom. And, uh, and, and he, he moved out of the bedroom. And, and so they were, they were in the same house, but, yeah. you know, but they had so much connected and so Soul many tie. things tied together that, yeah. you know, they couldn't actually move out. So they, they moved in separate bedrooms. And I remember the lady told me, mm -hmm. she said, uh, Pastor Glaze, she said, when you marry us, she said, we're not coming straight to the reception, that we're going to uh, stop, stop up, stop up at the house. <laughs> oh my goodness. And, and so, oh. so I, mar I married them and, and the day came, man, we, everybody was at the reception oh. and they didn't show up, man. And I said to myself, I know, wow. <laughs> I know where they wow. stopped at. <laughs> well, Pete, how about some verses? Uh, 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 how about some verses that do Now you want to drag me in. Yeah. Just when I'm getting out, you want to drag me in. Get us out of here, Pete. Right. Uh, how about some verses? Well, again, I think the scriptures she quoted yeah. Uh, yeah. and the scriptures we quoted just a, a little while ago, um, it, it comes back to, are we honoring God? Amen. Am I honoring God with my body? Are you honoring God with your body? Because again, if we, I'm going to thump it again. If we come back to the principles of, of the word of God and she read all the correct scriptures. And I know where Jay's coming as a pastor, that there, are, there may be some situations where a couple should live together. Again, all of us would say, don't even go oh, yeah, there. And then there's no way, I know you Jay well enough. There's no way that you're uh, promoting uh, intimacy. Um, 
there's a lot of variables involved. And well, and it's where our society is. I mean, I had someone call on the prayer line when I was answering here one time and said they wanted all this uh, healing in their relationship and they were living together. And I said, well, you know, you, you, God's not going to bless that. You can't. You and can't. she said, wait, you mean I have to move? I can't live together or God, God's not? And I said, well, yeah. And she hung up on me. You know, so, I mean. Uh, but you know, but in, 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 in this world we live in, in this age, the spirit of this age is in our culture, they're all living together. So I yeah. think it's very careful how we come about this because That's once true. I bring the truth to people yes. that want to get married yeah. and they address that truth in their hearts, they do, they separate, they move out. I make the recommendation, but uh, that's where faith begins where the will of God is known. Once you know the will of God and obey that, yeah. things turn yeah. for the good. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. Well, that's a good commentary and uh, you know, sorry for the confusion. If there was any, yes. we certainly believe that the, the Bible yeah. says the, to abstain from sex outside of marriage. That is God's, God wants that protected environment for that closeness, for that relationship, for that to be protected. Well, we like to end the program with the scripture and today we go to Romans where it says, be devoted to one another in love Honor one another above yourselves. We hope that you've enjoyed today's program and we want to hear from you. Email us your questions at hardquestions at ctvn.org or call into our hotline at 412-349-4326.